Okay, this is a review of factoring. Notice in red that it says this is a review. So if it feels like I'm not teaching it from the very beginning, that's because I'm not. You've learned this in a little bit integrated one, definitely in integrated two, then again in integrated three. So we are expecting that you remember it for your pre-calc course. So we are gonna be dealing with things with two terms, three terms, or four terms this year. When it has two terms, there's a couple of options. Maybe it's just GCF. So notice I said GCF is always the first step, but sometimes it's the only step. Especially if it's a two-term factoring problem, sometimes GCF is all you can do. Sometimes in a three-term factoring problem, GCF is all you can do. But we wanna keep an eye out for that always, especially in two terms. Then it might be difference of squares, or it could be sum or difference of cubes. Notice squares does not have a sum option. There is no sum of squares factoring. If you see something that looks like a squared plus b squared and it doesn't have a GCF, that's not factorable. You can't do sum of squares, but you can do sum and difference of cubes. Then if it has three terms, you could do trinomial factoring. Most of you know that as a diamond and a rectangle problem. And if it has four terms, you do grouping. So let's jump right in here. GCF, two terms. So it's always the first thing we check for, but when it's two terms, it's definitely something we wanna do. So you look at the numbers. So in example one, 12 and 18, what's the biggest number that divides into both of those? So I know they're both even, so they're both divisible by two, but I also see that they're both divisible by three. So three is gonna be part of our GCF. Notice it gets written in front. Then you look at the variables, x squared, y, those don't have any letters in common, so three is my whole GCF, it's written in front. Then you divide everything by the GCF. So if I divide 12x squared by three, I get 4x squared. The problem still says minus. If I divide 18y cubed by three, I get 6y cubed. Well, I can tell right now that I did not find the biggest GCF. Those are still even, so you can find it later if necessary, like I just did, or maybe when I was doing that, you were thinking, Mrs. Hodge, 6 goes into both of those. That's the GCF. 12 divided by 6 would give me 2x squared. 18 divided by 6 would give me 3y cubed. So maybe you saw it from the very beginning, from here to here, or maybe when you got here, like I did, you said, oh wait, those are still divisible by two. If I put that two out there with the three, multiply them together, that's where the six comes from. So it's not fully factored until you get it all the way down to fully simplified with the G, greatest common factor. Okay, let's try number two. Let's try to do it in only one step, huh? If I look at number two, 15 and 10, what goes into both of those, the biggest number that divides into both of those is five. And then if you look at your variables, x squared y, x y cubed, you can only take as many as they have to give, right? Like I can't take out x to the fifth here because this doesn't have x to the fifth and this doesn't have five x's either. Obviously I can't take out x to the fifth. You could only take out the fewest that you see. For x's, that one only has a single x. So I can only take out x to the one. For y's, this one has the fewest y's and it's a single, so I can only take out y. Remember, it gets written in front, it doesn't disappear. Factor divide by five and you get three. You're taking out one of those x's, so you'll have an x left, and you're taking out that y, so there's no y's to write down. Problem says plus, divide by five. You're taking out that x and you're taking out one of those y's, so it leaves y squared. And you could always do this in an area diagram to double check. The answer, no, sorry, the question goes on the inside. You still have to figure out the GCF on your own, 5xy, but hopefully you can see 5xy times what makes 15x squared y, that has to be 3x. 5xy times what makes 10xy cubed, that would have to be 2y squared. So that's another way to see it. This is my fully factored answer. Um, remember, I said GCF is always the first step, so even though this is not two terms, we still can do GCF. So see if you can find the greatest common factor for that. What numbers and variables can you factor out? So 10, 16, and 4, those are all divisible by 2. 
I see they all have x's. The fewest x's they have is x to the first power. They all have y's. The fewest y's they have happens to be y to the first power as well. Pause the video and see if you can finish factoring. You're taking out, divide by two, taking out one of those x's, taking out one of those y's. Divide by two, taking out the x's and the y's. Divide by two, taking out one x and one y. This was what I wanted to show. That actually is completely factored. There's nothing else we could do with that. Let's move on. Okay, next up is difference of squares. So remember, we're still on two terms. If it looks like some sort of a perfect square, that's what a squared represents, minus, that's the difference part, and then another perfect square, that's b squared, it will always factor to be a plus b, a minus b. Remember, the a comes from just square rooting. Squirt square root of a squared gives you a and it's the same for both and then square root of b squared squirt gives you b over here i'm showing why that works i put a minus b on one side and a plus b on the other a times a is a squared a times negative b is negative a b a times b is a b and b times negative b is negative b squared well hopefully you can pretty quickly see that negative a b plus AB goes away, and you just get A squared minus B squared left. This is why the difference of squares formula works. You will want to list out, if you don't already have a memorized, obviously 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, all the way down to, I would expect you to know 12 squared, which is 144. So finish that list on your own and make sure you have your perfect squares memorized, or you can do it by hand if you need to. Remember, what's the first step? No matter what, the first step is GCF. If I look at number one, 16 and four, yeah, those are perfect squares. They would be in my list over here, but 16 and four have a GCF. So start by taking out the GCF. What divides into 16 and four? Four, and then factored out. Remember, it doesn't disappear. 16 divided by four is four, x squared. Four divided by four does not disappear. Four divided by four is one, so minus one. So now what I have left is still a difference of squares. So you bring the 4, the GCF down, and then you factor what you have left. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 with a plus, 1 with a minus. So remember, you need to have the GCF and the factors in order to get full credit. On number 2... 81 and 25, I can't think of any numbers that go into both of those. They're both perfect squares, and it's minus, so it's difference of squares. The square root of 81x squared is 9x. Square root of 25 is 5. 1 with a plus, 1 with a minus. This is our answer. See if you can do number 3. 49 and 36. No common factors, x squared, y to the fourth, no common variables. The square root of 49x squared is 7x. The square root of 36y to the fourth is 6. And when you square root an exponent, you divide it by 2. So 6y squared, 1 with a plus, 1 with a minus. Difference of squares is supposed to be easy factoring. See if you can do the last one. Difference of squares factoring. Okay, then cubics. So you might want to, again, make a list of all the cubic numbers. One cubed, one times one times one is one. Two cubed, two times two times two is eight. Three cubed, three times three times three is 27. All the way down to, we'd expect you to be able to do 10 cubed. Tens are easy because it tells you how many zeros. So if it has two terms and you see any of the numbers in your list, remember this is an incomplete list, but if you see any numbers, cubic numbers, if it's plus, it could be a sum of cubes problem, factoring problem. If it's minus, it could be a difference of cubes factoring problem. We have, I have the formulas written right there for you. Notice they're almost identical. There's only a slight difference. So notice that if it was a sum problem plus, your first parentheses is plus, and then the second symbol 
is minus, and then the last symbol is always positive. Versus if it was subtraction, your first symbol is subtraction, your second symbol is the opposite of that, plus, and your third symbol is always positive. So there's a little acronym that we use to help us with this. SOAP. S stands for the same, the first symbol is the same. O stands for opposite. The second symbol is opposite. And the AP stands for always positive. So again, notice the letters are the same. And I'll talk about how you get those. You take the cubed root of your first term, which is cube root of A cubed is just A. Then you take the cube root of your second term, the cube root of B cubed is just B. Then from there, you take whatever the first term in your parentheses is and you square it. I'm gonna jump to the end. The end is the last term in your parentheses squared. And then the middle is just those two multiplied together. Yeah, new color, sorry. These two multiplied together gives you the middle, and then SOAP gives you the symbol. So let's look at number one. So number one, eight is a perfect cube, x cubed is obviously a cube, and 125 is also a cubic. Notice it's minus. So when I do cubics, I usually do it right below. So the cube root of eight, what cubed makes eight? That's two. And the cube root of x cubed is just x. I'm do the A's and B's first, and I'll come back and do the symbols next. So the cube root of 125, 5 cubed is 125, so that's 5. Notice I left a gap for the symbol. Now I'm going to start my next parentheses. Now I'm not even looking at the question anymore. Don't look at the question. We're only looking at what we wrote down here. 2x squared becomes 4x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x, so that was this times this and then the 5 squared is 25 and then we use soap to fill in our symbols same as the problem minus opposite plus always positive this is how you factor this difference of cubes see if you can do number two so we have 64 64 is 4 cubed and then x when you cube root x cubed you get x 343, that's 7. you got to make a list and work on memorizing your cubics. 7, and then y cubed cubed rooted is just y, leaving a gap for the numbers. Then don't look at the question. Look at what you just wrote down. That first term squared, 4x squared is 16x squared. Those two terms multiplied together, 28xy, and then your last term squared, 49y squared, and then soap. Same as the problem, plus this time. Opposite, minus, and then always positive. Cubic factoring. Okay, now we're moving on to three terms. Three terms is a trinomial. So trinomial factoring. I left space on your note sheet to draw this in. So we've got ax squared plus bx plus c. You make a diamond. Most of you. If you learned how to factor trinomials a different way, that's fine. But most of you, this is how you're going to do it. You do the first term times the last term, and you get a c x squared for the top. Just the middle term goes on the bottom. And the way diamond problems work is you're looking for two numbers that multiply to be the top and then add to be the bottom. And I called those two numbers just u and v, right? Who knows what they're going to be. For your area diagram, you draw the area diagram. The ax squared goes in the bottom left corner, and the c goes in the top right corner. The important part is that those are at an angle from each other. And then the answers you got, which I called u and v, those go inside the other two boxes. And it doesn't matter which goes where. And then you're going to factor. I can't do it without numbers, so let's jump into number one. So number one, draw your diamond and your area diagram.
multiply these two together and write it on the top of your diamond. Just this middle term goes on the bottom. First term. I probably shouldn't have made that yellow earlier. This should not be yellow because it's just the first term. It's not the C part. And C shouldn't be pink. I apologize for my highlighting incorrectly. Okay, so let me get rid of the highlight down here. Okay, so our first term times our last term, 6x squared. The middle term, 7x. Just the first term, just the last term. Okay, what multiplies to be 6x squared and adds to be 7? So if they get harder, make a list of what multiplies to be 6, right? 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and then figure out which one of those, some combination of adding and subtracting makes 7, so it must be 1x and 6x. It doesn't matter which goes where. I'm just going to put 1x here and 6x here. And then you look at one row at a time. So the bottom row, this is GCF factoring. If I am just looking at these, what do they have in common? They have an x in common. So that goes on the outside, the left. Well, then the way the area diagram works is the left times the bottom has to make x squared. So this must be x. The left times the bottom has to make 1x squared. So this must be 1. The left times the bottom has to make 6, so this must be 6, and then the left times the bottom makes 6x. So we have, it doesn't matter the order, x plus 6 as one of our factors and x plus 1 as the other. This is supposed to be an easy example. They're going to slowly get harder. Setup number 2. Okay, top of the diamond, 10x squared, bottom 7x, bottom corner 2x squared, top right 5. What multiplies to be 10 and adds to be 7? So factors of 10, 1 and 10, 2 and 5. So add or subtract to be 7, it must be 2x and 5x. 2x and one of them, 5x and the other. Just look at one row at a time. What do those have in common? The only common factor they have is x. So x times this must be 2x. 2x times this must be 1, and 1 times this must be 5. 2x plus 5. 2x, nope, sorry, x plus 1. We're going to try these a few more times. See if you can set up number 3. I'm going to set up all of these. Pause it and see if you can do number 3. Okay, so all I did was set up the diamonds on the area diagrams. 3x squared times 1 on the top. Negative 4x on the bottom. 3x squared, 1. Multiplies to be 3x squared, adds to be, add or subtract to be negative 4. So this time, the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3, but remember it's add or subtract. If I have negative 1x and negative 3x, check and see that multiplies to be 3x squared, but that adds to be negative 4x like we needed. So negative 1x, 3, negative 3x. So if I just look at the bottom row, this time... That has a 3x that you can factor on the side. Divide by 3x, that just leaves x times this must be negative 1. In order to get negative 3x, this must be negative 3. So we have x minus 3 and 3x minus 1. Number 4. Negative 12x squared, negative x. Pause it any time and try these on your own. Watching me do them over and over again is not as helpful as you trying them on your own. When the numbers get bigger, it's sometimes easier to leave. Make a list. 12 is 1 times 2, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 5. Okay, that's it. Some combination of those needs to add to be negative x. So it's got to be the 3 and the 4. Negative 4x and positive 3x multiplies to be negative and then still adds to be negative. Negative 4x and 3x. The only thing this row has in common is x, x, negative 4, 3. x minus 4, x plus 3. The order of your parentheses doesn't matter as long as you keep the same symbols. Number 5 is the last one. 
what do you notice about number five? All those numbers are even, so you need to start with GCF. Every other problem I've done so far did not have a GCF for trinomials, but we always want to remember to look for that first. They're all even, so 2 comes out front. It does not disappear. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Now you've got a much easier factoring problem. Just remember 2 is going to be part of your answer when you're done. But now I'm just looking at this part when I set up my diamond. 6x squared, 5x, x squared, 6. See if you can finish it. x plus 2 and x plus 3. Again, if you can factor another way, that's perfectly fine, but this is the way most of you were taught. Okay, the final type is when there's four terms, and when there's four terms, we use something called grouping. I wrote an example. Grouping doesn't really have a formula. You just kind of have to start doing it to see how it works. So that could be example number one, but I'm trying to show you how it works. So what you do is you group the first two terms in parentheses, and you look for the GCF. So if I was just looking at those two terms, they both have an A that I can factor out, and then you write down whatever's left. When I factor out an A, I have C plus D left. Then you look at the next two terms in a group. You group the next two terms and look for a GCF in those. Keep the plus sign in the middle. I guess I could make the plus sign back. Keep the plus sign. The GCF of the orange parentheses, they both have a B that I can factor out. And when you factor that out, divide by B, you get C. Divide by B, you get D. And notice these two parentheses are the same. That has to happen or you did it wrong. And here's what we basically have. We basically have A times Z plus B times Z. See how the parentheses, I'll make it yellow, they're the same, so I could basically call the whole parentheses z. So we have a times z plus b times z. Well, if that was the case, hopefully you can see that that has a GCF of z that you could factor out, and then you would have a plus b left. Right, so I'm doing GCF factoring. It's just that in our case, z is a little bit more complicated. So we would pull the z out, which is the entire parentheses, c plus d. You pull that whole thing out front, and then you group what's left. What's left would be a plus b. And this is the final answer. Grouping takes two steps. That would be our final answer, and we factored it. So let's see if we can group number one. So let's see. Group the first two. Look for the GCF. What do those 6xy and 8x have in common? Well, they're even, so they're divisible by 2, and they both have an x. So 2x can come out. When you divide by 2x, you get 3y. Divide by 2x, and you get plus 4. Bring your plus sign down. Group the next set. What do those have in common? Well, they're both divisible by 3. When you divide by 3, what do you have left? Well, you have 3y plus 4, which is good because it has to match or we did it wrong. So then I have one common factor of 3y plus 4 that I write in front. And then I group the leftover 2x plus 3. This is my factored form. The only other thing we have to be careful of is when there's a subtraction. So the first step's the same. So go ahead and group the first two terms and find your GCF. If it ever doesn't work, if you ever put parentheses around it and it doesn't work, you can rearrange the order of the four terms. But looking at these, I can see they're both even again, so divisible by 2. But we're looking for GCF. They're actually both divisible by 10. So I can factor the 10 out. They also both have, remember, smallest exponent, so they also both have a single x. So if I divide out the 10, I get 2, and if I take that x out, I get x. If I divide by 10, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. 
If I divide by 10x, I'm just going to get x. Then if I divide by 10x, I'm going to get plus 2. Here's the change. You include the minus in your parentheses. So you, it's kind of like plus minus, plus negative 2x minus, sorry, negative 2xy. So down here, when I'm looking for my GCF, sometimes it's helpful to remember what it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to match. My leftovers are supposed to match. And it's supposed to be x plus 2. So what do I need to factor out so that my leftovers come out to be x plus 2? Well, you need to factor out negative 2y. Right? If I divide by negative 2y, I get x. And if I divide by negative 2y, I get 2. So this negative sign is kind of the big difference. And then you take your GCF that matches the x plus 2 out front, because each one has an x plus 2, and you group the leftovers. 10x minus 2y. And this is our fully factored form. So this was just a review on factoring. Remember, this video is always up. You can watch it again. You can pause it and rewind it. And be sure to ask questions in class, too. Hope you're doing well.